I'm back with another video. Today we have the most powerful African gods of the Yoruba, of Yoruba mythology. It's on both screens. Without further ado, all right, all right, everything. Let's get straight into Yoruba the video. mythology is one of the richest mythological traditions in Africa, centered on the Orishas, which are spirits or deities associated with natural phenomena, ancestors, and abstract concepts. These divine beings not only govern natural forces such as rivers, mountains, and winds, but also more ethereal aspects of destiny, love, war, and wisdom. Through rich rituals, music, dance, and storytelling, followers of this tradition interact with and honor the Orishas, seeking harmony, guidance, and protection. Number one. Remember, it's real because they believe in it. Your own individual, personal experience is your experience, is your truth. But you gotta think it's thousands hundreds of thousands probably millions of people that believe in this that makes it even the more powerful all their energy their energy and a belief is in it it's in their conscious and subconscious and after that that's when it actualizes and materialize and manifest is real for them they believe in it. its tradition it's let's continue for one Olaran. Olaran is the supreme god, the creator of the universe. He is the source of all life and destiny, but is a distant god who does not involve himself directly in human affairs. Olaran is a central deity in Yoruba cosmology, a religious and cultural tradition originating with the Yoruba people of West Africa, especially present in parts of Nigeria, Benin, and Togo. Olaran is the supreme being above all other deities or Orishas in the Yoruba tradition. While Orishas may be worshipped and propitiated directly by humans in various ceremonies and rituals, Oloran transcends these acts and is seen as the ultimate source of all energy and life. Although Oloran is the supreme deity, the Orishas act as intermediaries between humans and the spirit world. These spirits have specific functions and domains in the natural and spiritual world. However, they all derive their power and existence from Olorun. Number 2. Orunmila he is not just one deity among many, but the very guardian of the deepest mysteries, the whispering voice that knows every twist and turn of the labyrinth of destiny. With eyes that have seen the rising and setting of stars, Orunmila contemplates the web of life with a depth and clarity that defies comprehension. His vision penetrates the mists of tomorrow, deciding the path each soul uh, must. You hear that one more time? You say. Orunmila contemplates the web of life with a depth and clarity that defies comprehension. His vision penetrates the mists of One more time. One more time, I bet. That defies comprehension. His vision penetrates the mists of tomorrow. With a wisdom that defines comprehension. That's like some things can't be uttered. It's not the matter of not having the words in your lexica to express whatever your sentiment is. For the highest knowledge is unutterable, for it exists as an entity in lanes which transcends all material words or symbols. Some things can't be explained. It can't be for you to understand it. So it's, it have to be experienced by the individual. Even then so. We both can experience it the same what it's the same thing, right? And we still will interpret it different. So all right, let's, uh, let's continue. Tomorrow, deciding the path each soul must take. Bearer of the IFA divination system, Orun Mila not only sees what is written in the stars, but has the ability to interpret, guide, and at times rewrite destinies. With his sacred tools and conch shells, he deciphers the enigmas of the universe, delivering his revelations to those who seek his wisdom. In the darkest moments, it is to Orun Mila that mortals and spirits turn. For beyond his power and knowledge, he is the eternal compass that, with his light, guides lost souls to their true destiny. Number three, Sango. Within the- That compass thing is interesting. Every time I ever got lost, and it don't even have to have a deeper meaning to that. I mean that way as well, but 
like literally lost like younger you and i don't know how the hell i ended up here but i'm here and i got on the wrong bus now i don't know what and then i'm just walking blind faith but i still make it back to my destination always even a few times i drove somewhere it's kind of a far it's a far ride i don't know what the going on the gps telling me the wrong it's still saying 30 minutes till i get back and i'm conf i'm aggravated and i still make it back somehow like i always make it back somehow you got some internal compass that get you back it's like you don't know but it's something that as if your energy, your source is primarily where you reside most of the time. And when you go this far distance, it's like it's some some cord. But it's some energy like cord and you wherever distance and you still make it back to where you spend most of your energy at or whatever. Like, that's what I noticed for me. It's like every time I get lost, I get back somehow. Like, well, let's continue. The impressive right. Yoruba pantheon, Sango bursts with force and fervor as the Orisha of lightning, thunder, and justice. With rumbling drums and the roar Thor. of storms, his presence is as powerful and overwhelming as the natural phenomena it represents. Sango symbolizes uncontainable power, passion, and authority. He is the righteous ruler who, with his double axe, punishes the wicked and rewards the righteous. Although he is feared for his wrath and his ability to unleash fire and destruction, he is also deeply respected for his unwavering sense of fairness and justice. Legends of Yoruba mythology tell that Sango was once a mortal king of the city of Oyo, known for his charisma, his skill in dance, and his control over fire and lightning. After his ascension to the spiritual realm, he became an Orisha, being eternally remembered for his prowess and fiery temperament. My guy got fire and thunder. He's whooping Thor ass. Like he got he got both elements. It's over with. That's crazy. I thought a lot of these stories and mythology was just the same character. And they switch some things or draw the character depict them in their image like you know how god made man in his image it's like you want something that look like you and you hold it to this let's continue some of the slaves brought to america were yoruba and as a result brought the worship of sango to the new world which is why he is part of voodoo and since we are talking about voodoo i'm thinking of releasing a video talking about voodoo and its spirits or loa so if you want the video of voodoo as soon as possible i ask you to give me like this video share it with your people and above all to comment what you think and if you want the video of voodoo so instead of months i will try to release it in weeks voodoo. and to people that think voodoo is fake it's not fake it's very much so real it's real people that believe in it and this is tradition ain't even a word it's been a thing they believed in this and blood sweat and tears thousands of years, of years probably millions probably billions of years people believe in this and all these people belief in it makes it that much more real and strong some people may What I was referring to earlier about the you believe in something so it becomes real for you. Some people like I don't believe in voodoo. And they would be like, so how would it work on me? I mean, that's interesting. Um, Cause let's, let's go with somebody that don't believe in voodoo, right? And someone else that do believe in it and know how to do it can still put you, put a hex on you. But you don't believe in it. So where's the... It's like it's a paradox there or something because it it they belief in it and them knowing what they doing to put this hex on you to put this root on you still will be real for you still will experience it it's similar like you can feel however you want to feel people feel how they feel it's still people out there that impose their will on people got them chained up finna torture them however many ways and however they do so desire and you you're going just like somebody else that believe in this voodoo hoodoo and they put a root on you and it becomes real even though you don't believe in it but it's still real when you suffer in the ramifications of what this it's interesting right how someone can physically impose their will on you 
It's nothing you can do about it once you in a clutch is already a and spiritually they can also impose their will on you whether you believe it or not let's continue Voodoo spell. Voodoo spell. wix gives you the power of ai I need to, to build line. the website you need <laughs> with full business fun number four ogun ogun manifests ogun. as the orisha of iron war technology and manual labor with the radiance of forged metal and the determination of the craftsman his presence is as robust and essential as the tools he represents ogun is the patron of blacksmiths farmers hunters and all those who work with tools and machines his domain ranges from roads and frontiers to initiation and passage rituals symbolizing the process of transformation and evolution in yoruba mythology ogun is known for his pioneering spirit his ability to clear obstacles and create paths, both literally and metaphorically. Although he is known for his fierce temperament and warrior nature, he is also an innovator and protector, defending communities and facilitating technological and social progress. Number five, Oshun. Oshun is one of the most revered deities in the Yoruba tradition and is known for his wisdom and his ability to grant wishes. She stands out as the Orisha linked to the river, water being her main element. She is the emblem of purity, fertility, love, and sensuality. Despite her divinity, Oshun possesses human traits that bring her closer to her devotees. Vanity, jealousy. You see, like with the four arms, well, I think the Hindu deity have, is that more? I think it has more than four arms. You see, it's like it's a lot of similarities in these mythologies and it just be someone that looked like a group of people, but it'd be very similar. Then be someone else that looked like another group of people, but the abilities or whatever be very similar as well. So it's like. Is that a tetrahedron behind her? Jealousy and rancor. There are countless legends that frame Oshun's transcendence in the Yoruba Cosmovision. She is often portrayed as a motherly, protective, and benevolent Oh yeah, what's this? What's this? What's this? This... This American guy, yeah, right? ...who watches over humanity. She is also known as the custodian of spiritual balance and is revered as the mother of sweetness and pleasure. One of the most emblematic stories about Oshun places her at the center of human creation. According to Yoruba mythology, Oloran, the supreme god, sent several Orishas to Earth to give it life and prosperity. Among these Orishas, Oshun stood out as the only female presence among 17 deities. While her male counterparts repeatedly failed in their mission, it was Oshun who, realizing her omission in the divine plan, decided to act. With the generosity and potency of her waters, Oshun brought life back to Earth, making the existence of mankind and other creatures possible. Number 6. Babalu-ai Babalu-ai occupies a special place as the Orisha of illnesses and, on the other hand, of healing. He is the guardian of ailments and afflictions, but also of remedies and cures, demonstrating the duality of his nature. babalu I represents not only the physical pain and suffering that can affect the body, but also the resilience and recovery of the human spirit. It is a bridge between discomfort and restoration, between imbalance and the return to health. The stories and legends of Yoruba mythology describe babalu I as a deity who can punish with illness when disrespected or taboos are broken, but who also has the compassion and knowledge to offer healing. His dominion extends over epidemics, plagues, and diseases, but also over herbs and rituals that alleviate those ills. Number seven, Oya. Oya rises with power and passion as the Orisha of winds, storms, and transformation. She is the protector of the mysteries of life and death, and her presence is as tempestuous as the wind that represents her. Oya symbolizes constant change, the ebb and flow of life, and the uncontainable power of nature. She is said to have the ability to bring winds of change, both literally and figuratively, carrying with her profound and often tumultuous transformations. Tales from Yoruba mythology describe Oya as a fierce warrior, with a temperament as unpredictable and powerful as a storm. However, she is not only destructive, she is also a figure of renewal and regeneration. 
After the storm comes the calm and the opportunity for a new beginning. Oya also has a deep connection to the realm of the dead, often being seen as the guardian of the cemeteries and a mediator between the world of the living and that of the ancestors. Number 8. Isu. Esu is the Orisha of destiny, change and communication between the divine and earthly realms. He acts as the messenger of the Orishas, transmitting offerings and communications between humans and the gods, but is also known for his mischievous nature and is a mischief. I love you. What is what is destiny when you have different realms? and parallel universes of every possible outcome. If you're an astronaut, you're a scientist, you're a doctor, and you every possible outcome you are in a parallel universe. If you're on 10.1 Aweas, 10.2 would be a doctor, 10.3, so on and so forth. So it's like, what is destiny if every outcome exists for you? And does destiny, destiny, if you got destiny, do you have free will as well? I mean, and what's so funny about it is not to say you don't have free will, not to say you do. With your free will, you do what you're going to do and it, whatever it is, I already know what you're going to do before you do it. So the cards are still going to fall into place how it's supposed to. You ever been through deja vu? Something happened. And for the hell of it, you just being weird. You just do the most random thing to change what you've seen already. To throw off the trajectory of the outcome. To see what will happen. It, whatever it is, already knew you were going to do that. And for you to be able to intervene and make that change, well, at least you think you did. This Grand Theft Auto we, we in, the simulation, it has that encrypted in the code. And so it's in the files for you to be able to make that change. I fuck what I'm saying. Let's continue. Man. <laughs> the ability to create confusion get into the and conflict. Isu represents the unstable balance between good and evil, the duality of life, and the unpredictability of fate. He is often described as the guardian Fate. of crossroads, symbolizing the decisions we make Fate. and the directions Fate. we choose in life. Legends and tales from Yoruba mythology describe Esu as a cunning deity who enjoys playing tricks and testing humans. However, his antics are not simply for fun. They are often intended to teach lessons, reveal hidden truths, or realign destiny. Despite his sometimes deceptive nature, Esu is central to Yoruba worship. He is offered before any other Orisha to ensure that messages and sacrifices reach their proper destination. He is the mediator and facilitator, the one who ensures that communication between the worlds keeps flowing. And before I continue with the video, while searching on the subject, I have found that this religion is very broad, so I will not be able to bring out all the Orisha in this video. But if we reach 500 comments or 5,000 likes, I promise to bring out a part two, so if you are interested, you know how to show your support. Number nine, Yamaya. Yamaya shines as the queen of the oceans, the mother of all waters and protector of the children of the earth. Her presence is as deep and all-encompassing as the ocean itself, and her love for her children is as immense as the waters she rules. Yamaya represents the essence of flowing life, motherhood, and fertility. She is the mother who cares and protects, and in whose lap all find solace and refuge. It is said that all rivers flow towards her, symbolizing her capacity to The protector of children, more than 800,000 kids alone go missing in the United States. It's a multi-billion dollar business, especially worldwide. It's probably multi-trillion at that point. But I've seen videos of kids working in the coal mines to get the, I don't know if they're trying to get obsidian screens to make iPhones. I don't know what they're doing. What they're doing is crazy, though. Well, that's a lot that's going on. It don't look like they protected from shit. Nobody. Men, women, or children, nothing. Nothing. But respect, respect, let's continue. 
I don't see it. Let me know if you see it. I don't see shit being protected. I mean, unless you protecting it, you got to save yourself. To receive, nurture, and protect all. The stories and myths of Yoruba mythology portray Yamaya as the primordial mother from whom all forms of life originate. Although she is loving and compassionate, she can also be fierce when it comes to defending her children or punishing those who harm them. Number 10. I know this aside from the video, the government, the elitists, the Rome Empire people that still here to this day, and the people that created these people to do a bidding, they still here enjoying the convenience of a group of people's ignorance, being the indigenous and aboriginal people, the spoils of war. I haven't seen them receive credit karma yet. The same people giving us a credit score and they $35 trillion in debt, but you got the nerve to give me a credit score, I'll snipe your ass. Man, this shit a myth. I don't, this shit a myth. Ain't no way. What I'm seeing, what's going on, uh, protector of shit. It looked like everything go. Everything is for sale. Everything being bidded on. You not exempt. You or your children. And Orisha Oko, in the Yoruba tradition, is the Orisha specifically in charge of agriculture, soil fertility, and the harvest. He is an essential deity for communities that depend on the land for their livelihood and well-being. Orisha Oko has a close bond with the earth and is revered primarily by farmers and those who seek to ensure a bountiful harvest. He blesses the soil, ensuring that it is fertile and conducive for planting. He is often associated with colors such as green, which represents vegetation and the fertility of the earth. Its symbols and sacred tools are often linked to agriculture. Its relationship with Olakun, the deity of the deep sea, can be seen in the context of the water cycle, essential for agriculture. Number 11. Olakun. Olakun is revered and respected as the Orisha of the ocean depths the domain of the unknown and the hidden riches of the sea. His kingdom encompasses the mysterious and dark depths of the ocean, where the light of the sun does not reach, and unfathomable mysteries and secrets are attributed to him. Olokan symbolizes both the serenity and the ferocity of the ocean. He is the peace of the deep waters, and also the powerful force behind the great waves and storms. He is an Orisha of wealth, abundance, and prosperity, for it is believed that the riches of the sea, such as fish and submerged treasures, are under his guardianship. Yoruba mythology is replete with tales that highlight the magnitude and power of Olakun. Although he reigns in the depths, his influence is felt on the surface and in the interplay between ocean and land. He is often described in a symbiotic relationship with Aganju, the Orisha of the earth and volcanoes. Together, these two Orishas represent the balance between the sea and the land, a dance between the known and the unknown. Number 12. Aganju. Aganju is revered as the Orisha of the earth, the vastness of the wilderness and in some contexts of volcanoes and mountains. He is a deity of great strength and power, associated with the creation and transformation of the terrestrial landscape. The figure of Aganju is crucial in the connection between heaven and earth. His dominion over the earth, deserts, and inhospitable places makes him a pillar in the survival and adaptability of humanity in the face of geographical adversity. Numerous myths surround Aganju, highlighting its ability to forge and transform the land. It is the sustenance of the dry land and a pillar in the formation of mountains and geographical features. Its influence is not only felt in the formation of the land, but also in the ability of people to overcome obstacles and adapt to new environments. Before you close the video, I remind you of our goal of 500 comments or 5,000 likes for a part two, or leave your comment for the video about the spirits of voodoo. To finish, here are two other videos of mythology in case you are interested. Well, that's it for this video. Don't forget to like the video. If you like the video, comment, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications. DM me the link via X, formerly known as Twitter. Let me know what you want me to react to next or what you want me to talk about. Follow me on Twitch, Kick, and Rumble. Before we start rumbling, I kick your ass and you end up twitching.
I'm going to finish out the um, mythology series. I think I got... It's a lot of mythologies. You got Celtic. You got... What was it? Let me see. What was that word? S Slavic? You... It's, it's, a, it's, it's a lot of them. But, um... Yeah, I'm genuinely enthused and interested in mythology. Everything that's in the realm of the unknown or unutterable, esoteric, uh, exorcisms, everything. Like, Exodus? Nah. But that's it for this video, man. Shout out to Papa Legba. I'll see you on the next video, man. I'm out.